The evolution of animals is actually a complex system. While the way we usually describe animal evolution may seem like the result of their efforts, the success or failure of animal evolution actually depends on one factor, and that is luck. For example, during the Cambrian explosion, all animals were essentially starting from the same point. The advantage went to those that evolved shapes more favorable for survival. After the mass extinction at the end of the Permian period, the biosphere was nearly destroyed, and luck became a decisive factor for survivors. However, the luck of post-extinction survivors mainly depended on where they were located. For instance, the ancestors of mammals, named beasts, had relatively poor luck. They were trapped in a small region in the southern part of a vast desert and had to watch as dragons outperformed them. On the other hand, some groups of animals had exceptionally good luck. Take, for example, the ichthyosaur, which had ancestors living in what is now the central part of China. However, at the beginning of the Triassic period 250 million years ago, this region was a warm archipelago near the equator. This environment allowed medium-sized animals, represented by ammonites, to quickly recover in numbers. The earlier predators of ammonites, such as the helicoprian sharks, had gone extinct in the catastrophe, allowing ammonites to thrive. In the vicinity of these ammonite-filled seas, there lived a semi-aquatic reptile resembling a crocodile, and this was the ancestor of the ichthyosaur. Their luck was truly exceptional. The evolution of ammonite shells was primarily in response to early cartilaginous fish. However, ichthyosaurs, relying on their powerful dragon-like bite, easily crushed ammonites with their strong jaws. With this almost limitless food resource, the ancestors of ichthyosaurs began to develop and grow, eventually depleting the food source. As a result, the ancestors of ichthyosaurs were forced to seek out additional sources of food. Among them, one group began to reduce their body size and become more agile to capture more agile prey, such as small ammonites and fish. Among these, there were like Carterhunchus and Sclerocormus. They resembled seals with long tails and their limbs evolved into paddle-like structures, indicating that they spent most of their time in the sea. Even in this environment, the ocean offered more abundant food resources compared to the desolate land. The ancestors of ichthyosaurs then completely abandoned the land and soon after, Caohusaurus emerged. While their body plan still resembled that of lizards, their spindle-shaped bodies and fish-like tails suggested that these animals were likely becoming marine creatures. More importantly, Caohusaurus possessed the ability to give birth to live young without returning to land for reproduction. Similar to Keohusaurus, Utatsusaurus from the same era had already reached the Japanese region, indicating that these animals had developed the capability for long-distance oceanic migration. They marked the pioneers in the evolutionary history of terrestrial vertebrates returning to the sea, and this marked the true birth of ichthyosaurs. What was the reason behind the rapid rise of the ancestors of ichthyosaurs? Actually, we can look at the situation in the oceans at that time. During that period, sharks had not yet recovered from the devastating impact of the end Permian mass extinction, and the future competitors of ichthyosaurs, such as the Pliche, not yet emerged. So, ichthyosaurs were fortunate enough to dominate the oceans. Due to the lack of competition, throughout the entire 50 million years of the Triassic period, the evolution of ichthyosaurs gives the impression of having no particular ambition. The ichthyosaur family originated as predators of ammonites, but even after dominating the oceans, they continued to focus on eating ammonites. Well, their menu did expand to include fish and shrimp, possibly even some small marine reptiles. However, 
Ichthyosaurs rarely targeted vertebrates larger than one meter in size. For instance, there were creatures like Symbospondylus, which were over 10 meters long, ruling the shallow seas. Strangely, they evolved into eel-like shapes and specialized in preying on small animals near reefs. Then, there's Himalayasaurus, a massive 15-meter creature with a huge mouthful of sharp teeth, but it only dined on squid in the ocean. The most amusing example is Shaunosaurus, some of which could reach lengths of over 20 meters, making them the largest marine reptiles in history. Yet they still only ate squid, and they even evolved to have reduced teeth for this diet. It wasn't until a series of disasters at the end of the Triassic period that the ichthyosaurs realized that plesiosaurs, ichthyosaurs of smaller sizes were also delicious options. Finally, the Temnodontosaurus, with a length of around 10 meters, represented the ichthyosaur family's first ascent to the top of the food chain. This marked the first time that a member of the ichthyosaur family became the undisputed ruler of the seas. However, Temnodontosaurus arrived too late. It was already the Jurassic period. In the shallow seas, the former prey, Sauropterygians, had completed their 50 million years of dormancy and were about to evolve into the killing machines known as Pliosauroidea. Meanwhile, the earliest Thalatosuchia were also about to enter the sea and join this deadly game. In the deep sea, sharks were finally awakening from their ancient slumber. Among them, a branch would soon evolve into Carcharhiniforms, a group that gave birth to countless top marine predators. However, the prosperity of a dynasty cannot be sustained by luck alone. Temnodontosaurus barely held the Ichthyosaur dynasty together for 25 million years, marking the final glory of the Ichthyosaur dynasty. Starting from the mid-Jurassic period, the Ichthyosaur family underwent a series of distinctive changes. On one hand, they began to resemble fish more than their ancestors. Their slender bodies turned into chubby spindle-shaped forms, and they developed dorsal fins and symmetrical fish tails. At the same time, their eyes became exceptionally large. All of these changes pointed to a sad fact. Ichthyosaurs were gradually withdrawing from the rich, shallow seas and were forced to migrate to the barren, deep seas. Their rounded bodies allowed them to store more fat and oxygen, enabling them to cross vast and barren open oceans and dive into deeper depths. Their large eyes were primarily for locating prey that other marine reptiles couldn't reach in the dimly lit depths of the ocean. However, plesiosaurs and thalatosuchia were not content to remain in shallow waters forever. While they might not necessarily have the ability to prey on ichthyosaurs, they could at least compete for ichthyosaurs' food resources and habitats. On the other hand, sharks would never give up their throne at the top of the food chain. Sharks were a ruthless bunch, especially considering that ichthyosaurs were no longer the fastest swimmers by this time. With various factors working against them, ichthyosaurs found their living space increasingly restricted, and fate finally began to abandon them. Starting from over 140 million years ago in the Cretaceous period, a group of highly mobile ray-finned fish began to rise to dominance. These are the fish species we commonly encounter today. They became the mainstream swimmers in the ocean, leaving ichthyosaurs feeling the despair of being unable to catch their prey. Even the traditional ichthyosaur prey, the ammonites, became increasingly challenging to deal with. During the Cretaceous period, there were many giant ammonites with thick, heavy shells floating in the sea seemingly mocking the weak, biting power of ichthyosaurs. Around 90 million years ago, in the mid-Cretaceous period, the oceans experienced a period of unexplained severe oxygen depletion known as the cenomanian turonian boundary event. This event became the ultimate reason for the downfall of the ichthyosaur family. 
Approximately 94 million years ago, the last known species of ichthyosaurs disappeared completely from the oceans. This is an ancient discovery. See you in the next video.